What's going on everybody? I'm Dory Goodman of The Time Teller. Happy Monday. So today we're going to be talking about um, another little kind of uh, brain twister. I'm not very intelligent, so when I have to think for more than like a few seconds, I get... I get a little confused sometimes, but um, someone gave me a little bit of a riddle uh, and they were like, can you make a list of watches you like from companies you don't like? And I was like, yeah, so I, yeah, let's do that. It's 12.45 p.m. Let's get down to business. All right, so the first company I am not a huge fan of, Tag Heuer. Right, I've made multiple episodes, very controversial for some reason, um, because apparently anybody actually expressing themselves with honest opinions is not allowed here. Uh, but yeah, I'm not a huge fan of TAG, and it's because of Hoyer. I love Hoyer. Hoyer watches were incredible, but TAG has essentially bastardized the brand. I don't know if I'm allowed to say that on Instagram. I'm on YouTube right now. I'm just such a social media superstar, I never know where I am. <laughs> could be on uh, YouTube one second, I could be on Instagram the other second, I could... <laughs> I'm addicted to technology, okay? If I don't have people watching me at all times telling me that I'm doing a good job, I am gonna go f crazy! Didn't mean to... I said a word I definitely can't say on YouTube right now, so... But, but jokes aside, Tag is not the Hoyer that we knew. It's just somebody that I used to know. But is there a Tag Heuer that I would own? And this is kind of cheating, but yeah, the Tag Heuer Monaco. And um, I get it, it was originally a Heuer, but Tag now produces it. And there's one that has come out very recently that I want to talk about, so perfect timing. No pun intended, because we're talking about what I'm the time teller. Whatever. There is a new Tag Heuer Monaco Special Edition 2009-2019 limited uh, to 169 pieces, I think. Now the Monaco, of course, perfect sizing. It is a square watch, but it comes in right around 39 millimeters, taking up, you know, the perfect amount of real estate on your wrist. Coming in stainless steel with actually a gray dial. And one thing that I absolutely love about this Tag Heuer Monaco is it's incredibly functional, especially for a chronograph. Now, um, of course, the Monaco is known as a very traditional racing chronograph, so um, ideally, if you're in a race car, you're gonna be on dry land, and if you end up in the wet, you've done something very wrong, but uh, this has got a 100 meter water resistance rating, so it's incredibly usable, incredibly sharp, just a gorgeous watch, and guess what? Tag, the word tag, is not on the dial. I love it. But yeah, an incredibly impressive watch. It's got a 59 joule automatic chronograph movement, their caliber 11, and it vibrates at 28,800 BPH. So, you know, very smooth. I, by accident, once on this channel referred to 28,800 BPH movement as high beat, and it was, that technically was a high beat movement, um, but people were like, it has to be above 30,000 to be considered high beat nowadays. <laughs> and I was like, whatever. I'm just gonna be sitting back here chilling with my Vacheron Constantine. So yeah, this Tag Heuer Monaco Special Edition 2009-2019 Limited. Of course, limited to 169 pieces, but guys, uh, one thing I wanna applaud them for doing is that this is actually a very attainable um, or reasonably priced uh, limited edition, especially this is under 200 pieces and um, a very prolific wash that they could have easily, you know, made the price incredibly high, but this is coming in well under 10 grand at 65.50. So, um, of course, this isn't, you know, a price that I would just buy on a whim, but very reasonable for, you know, the watch that it is and for how limited it is. So, uh, gotta give Tag, you know, some credit there. So, um, Tag Heuer Monaco 2009-2019 Limited, uh, yeah, that's a watch I like from a company I don't. Next up, Movado. That's right, Movado gonna talk about why you keep ruining yourself just go just go back go back go back I've mentioned it in numerous episodes uh, the company changed hands in the mid 1980s and from that point on the company has absolutely tanked um, you know fiscally they've probably been doing pretty well but uh, they're not making the watches they used to make but once long ago 
they had a very nice relationship with Zenith, and they were making beautiful watches together. One of those watches I've had the pleasure of having here in the office, and in the inventory at the T3 shop. By the time you see this episode, I'm not sure if it's gonna be available, um, but, you know, very cool Zenith made Movado. So, um, the one I wanna talk about today is the 1970s Movado El Primero. That's right, so, um, although I do not like Movado right now, I did, I liked, I mean, I wasn't around in the 1970s, but I liked the Movados from yesteryear. So let's take a closer look at this one, the Movado El Primero. Now this chronograph vibrates at 36,000 BPH, so um, we can all agree this is a high beat movement. Uh, 50 hour power reserve and 31 joules. This is a gorgeously designed, very simple El Primero chronograph. Uh, you got a date window down right in between the four o'clock and the five o'clock. I think they did a good job with that. Is it my ideal placement for a date window? Eh, no, but I think it's sharp. Everything's aligned. I can't really complain about that. Uh, the example that I'm gonna be showing you, or at least the example I'm looking at right here, has beautiful patinated indexes. Uh, again, I don't think they were designed to be patinated, but it's aged a bit and I think it looks gorgeous. Um, you know, very clean, very cool. Uh, and I mean that uh, temperature wise, everything is, uh, kind of the gray steel cool metal. Uh, nothing really jumps out at you, fairly subdued. And I think that's what I really like about Zenith and ultimately, you know, this Movado. It's, it's so interesting. Um, it says Movado on the dial, but right above that is the Zenith logo. And I guarantee you everywhere else, it's signed Zenith. So um, yeah, I, I wish they could make watches like this again. Um, I don't think it's gonna happen. This one, again, a really appealing thing to me is that this has an integrated bracelet. So uh, they pulled it off so well. I think this is an absolutely gorgeous watch. The Movado El Primero. Next up, a company that I have a little bit of a beef with, Tudor. Now guys, um, mm, Tudor's a very weird company, okay? Because lately they've only been able to produce Black Bays. And then when they deviated from that, they made technically, I guess, another thing they call Black Bay, but it's an SKX. <laughs> that was such a sassy face, but it's an SKX. <laughs> People are gonna be like, what are you talking about? This, this, that design came out before the SKX, and blah, 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 blah. Little do they know that Seiko had four o'clock crown divers that came out before that design. So how about that? Dude, Gato probably thinks I'm a psycho. Cause he sees all the, he sees all my outbursts and like only puts the ones in that he thinks are somewhat necessary. There's about like 3000 other ones that he's like, nope, nope, we're not, nope, nope. This isn't going into the episode, nope. But if there's one tutor that I actually would like to have in my collection, it's the North Flag. I've said it before, you know, this is kind of like a high tech, edgy, sharp take on a field watch. I love field watches. And I think this is one watch that Tudor has designed that's incredibly unique. Smooth bezel, very, very sharp edges, display case back, that really nice tasteful splash of yellow against that matte black dial again with the second hand. And they did a very good job with the power reserve indicator. I know you either love or you hate those. Um, I'm a big fan. And I think Tudor did such a nice kind of uh, modern take on, on, when designing this watch and, and I really like it. So uh, the Tudor Ranger, again, I think that's just bleh. But this one, ooh, I spit on the camera lens, but whatever, it wasn't on purpose. All right, the next company I never thought I'd ever have on a list of watches that I like, uh, really don't, this is kind of like the, the expensive Invicta. Let me take a sip of my coffee before I even talk about this watch. The Ulysses Nardine. People are gonna complain. <laughs> you said it wrong. Okay, how would you like it? Ulysses Nardin. Oh. Anyway, the ULC Nardine uh, Marine Torpilleur, a limited edition automatic chronometer, black dial men's watch, and it has a very, has a very long reference number. It's not that long. 1183 320 LE. Okay, why do I like this watch? Well, it actually looks kind of like a rugged military pilot's watch, and uh, I dig it. Now this is coming in, you know, fairly big on the wrist, but that's to be expected from ULC Nardine, and it's to be expected from this style of watch, right? Bigger uh, pilot's watches, I don't know if they, if they, let's see, it's a, it's a, I don't know what that means. Does that, what, what does this mean? Let me look what this mean, what this word means. Okay, so it means torpedo boat. Uh, 
it is kind of a military type design and you know they need that legibility i get it some of the old school military watches were larger on the wrist this one is 44 millimeters uh, looks to have a very very legible dial um, those arabics just blocked on there looks good again i think it's a nice watch i think it, 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 just give me some credit here guys because there aren't a whole lot of of these Ulysses Nardine that, that I would ever consider wearing, but this is definitely one of them. 60 hour power reserve, black PVD coated case. Um, I don't know anyone who owns this watch, but I'm sure it's decently made. Now there's one thing that does bother me about this watch is that it has the word marine in the name, so somewhat nautical, uh, and then topile, which I guess is torpedo boat. Now what's funny is people are going to complain about how I pronounced that word, but then when I say Ulysses Nardine, uh, they're going to say that I mispronounced that one. So how do you want me to speak? Do you want me to speak, uh, you know, in my native accent, or do you want me to attempt these foreign accents and then uh, I can't win. I'll get made fun of either way. But the one thing I don't like is that this says torpedo boat, this says marine, um, but it only has a 50 meter water resistance rating. And um, I know people are going to be like, oh, you're going to take this deeper than 50 meters time teller? No, that's not how water resistance works. Um, but you know, people will complain about anything. So uh, my complaint is that I would like to see this have at least a 100 meter water resistance rating. It's, it's a nautical military themed watch. Let's get it wet, baby. Okay, and the last watch on my list of watches that I dig from companies I don't um, is the Frank Muller or Frank Muller, Frank Mueller, Frank Muller, whatever. <laughs> Uh, it's the Casablanca Chronograph. Now, why do I like this watch? Uh, now, I, I guess there are a few variants of this. I like the gold case with the clean white dial and the blue hands. It's because this watch reminds me of the Cartier Monopusier, which is one of Cartier's coolest watches. Now, this is obviously not a mono pusher. This is obviously more of a classic chronograph with two pushers but just the dial layout with the uh, two dual registers right there next to the spindle, it, it, it looks very classic and there's not a whole lot of uh, Frank Mueller watches that I really like. So um, I digged, I dug deep. Yeah, this is, this is one of them. So the Cla Ca Casablanca chronograph, out of all the watches, out of all the lists in the world, you gotta walk into my list. All right, you're in my list. That was my take on it, I don't know. Do you guys know the reference? I was referencing Casablanca, whatever. But yeah, this one was made right around the year 2000, uh, 43 by 32 millimeters. Again, kind of has um, not quite, kind of a tonneau case. Um, now, this says online it has a 100 meter water resistance rating, which kind of just blows my mind because if that's the case, this very kind of dressy chronograph has a higher water resistance rating or a deeper water resistance rating, I should say, than that Ulysses Nardin um, torpedo boat marine watch. So that's kind of fogging my mind right now. But um, yeah, this one is in rose gold. Just looks like an elegant, simple watch. So I gotta give it to FM. Good job, Frank. Yeah. I like it. I dig it. But there you have it, guys. See, I am uh, I'm trying to be reasonable here, okay? Here are some companies that I really don't like, but, uh, you know, you can find beauty anywhere. Will I find it in Invicta's modern catalog? Probably not. But guys, I want to include you in the fun, so in the comment section, leave me a little list. I think I did one, two, three, four, five. That's a good number. Um, leave me five watches that you like from companies you don't, and we can talk about it there, and it can be kind of a little reference. We can use it as a little forum. So um, I'd love to see what you pick, and uh, yeah, leave me that comment. I want to hear from you. And of course, if you enjoyed this episode, if you learned something new, or if you just had a chuckle, uh, the easiest way to support the channel is just to click the subscribe button and hit the bell icon so you don't miss out. We upload all the time, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, with a live stream Q&A every single Saturday, rain or shine. And uh, if you want to go above and beyond, if we got an Amazon store, that's an easy way of uh, supporting us when you shop there, link in the description below. And also, uh, www.thetimetellershop.com. Every watch there is handpicked by me, serviced professionally by watchmakers. Don't worry, I'm not there tinkering on the watches because I, I let's be honest, I can't do anything right. But I at least do pick the watches and uh, I'm part of the inspection process. And 
we got a one year warranty on all those pieces. So um, very easy, direct way of supporting the channel. Everything we do here is shopping there at the Time Teller Shop. We got some watch prints like this and uh, you know, we're working on some other stuff to offer you there. So um, yeah guys, thank you so much for, uh, all, by the time you see this, we might be at 80,000 subscribers, which is freaking crazy. So thank you, thank you so much. And uh, yeah, like, comment, subscribe, show this with other watch enthusiasts, other people you think would enjoy this. I'm Jory Goodman, the time teller, and always remember, I didn't invent time, I just tell it. Real quick, if you enjoyed this episode, then do not worry, the fun doesn't need to stop here. Check out these recommended episodes that are gonna be popping up on the screen anytime now. Also, take a moment, check out my brand new channel, the Time Away channel. It's where I talk about everything outside of the watch world, some of my other collections, some of my other hobbies, and if you're not interested in any of that, don't worry, just stay right here, and I will see you right here. Because I, I never leave. I am trapped inside of this camera. And nice.